As we travel north through Portugal, it's time for us to visit the historic city of Porto. But if you're on a tight budget, what sort of experience can you expect? Here is our almost free walking tour of Porto. Porto on a budget. Hello and welcome back to another Four of the Knobs Explorers video. Today we are visiting Porto, but we're not quite in the city centre yet. We're just on the outskirts, the van is just camped over there, we'll show you that later. But the first hurdle we've come across is how to buy a ticket for the tram. I think we've just about figured out. <laughs> Once we had mastered the ticket machine, it was pretty simple to use. A return ticket costs €3.80, but it also includes the cost of a reusable travel card. Automated ticket machines are found at all stations and the metro is the cheapest way to explore the city. Our first stop of the day is another public transport hub, but don't judge this book by its cover. So this is one of the world's most stunning train stations. We are at Sao Bento station. With over 20,000 tiles, it took the artist and painter 11 years to finish. It's totally free to take a peek inside, but we recommend avoiding peak times. So behind us is Sao Bento station, and I must agree, it is one of the most beautiful train stations I've been to. So we're going to take a quick walk this way, about six minutes, to the cathedral on top of the hill. So Porto Cathedral was built between the 12th and 13th century. Today's activities, we're going to try and keep them free or very, very cheap. To go inside and have a tour and the museum costs three euros, but by now we've seen quite a few cathedrals and churches, so we're going to leave it for today. Not hugely expensive, I imagine it's quite reasonable for the things that you'd see inside, but we've got much more to see in Porto today. So even if you don't decide to visit the cathedral, it's worth walking up here anyway because the views are quite spectacular. Unfortunately, it's a little bit grey and overcast for us today, but it's still quite a pretty sight to see. We're now off to see a piece of old wall. The Fernandina walls behind us were built in the 14th century, but only a very small portion of it has survived. The rest has all been rebuilt. Once upon a time you could access and walk upon the walls for free, but now it costs money. You can still see it from the outside, but I think it's time for a coffee anyway. We have just crossed the famous Pont de Bon Louis I bridge. It was created in 1886. It is 400 meters long and 85 meters high. And rather beautiful actually for a bridge. What's been really good so far is that everything's within a really good walking distance, like five or six minutes to each little spot that we want to see. Case in point, we've literally just crossed the road from our vantage point where we're looking at the St. Louis Bridge. And up here is Cedar do Pilar, which is a monastery which also provides stunning views of the city. It's just a shame it's quite foggy still. Goodbye! Look at that lovely blue sky. It's a shame we're travelling in February, isn't it? As you can see, the views are absolutely fantastic. And what's better, it costs absolutely nothing. The monastery is now a military base and museum. 
So all this walking around Porto is really thirsty work and there's one thing you should try when you're here and that is obviously tasting the port. So right now we're in a really good hot spot for tours so we're going to have a look around and find the best one for us and hopefully learn a bit more about port. Let's find ourselves a port cellar. There are plenty of port wine cellar tours to choose from on the banks of the River Douro. In a quiet side street we found Quinta dos Corvos. Tours cost 10 euros per person, which includes the tour, a talk and a taste of two ports and an aged wine. So we've just left our port cellar tour at Quinta dos Corvos. We had a lovely guide called Manuel and he told us they only produce 30,000 bottles per year and we can only find it here in Porto. We weren't allowed to film the tour, obviously, so we did ask politely to film a bit of the barrels and the wine itself, the port and stuff. We have made a purchase of some white port, which we had both never tried before. It was really sweet, tasty, and I can't wait to demolish it with some cheese when we meet my dad and Marie in the next couple of weeks. So obviously we said at the beginning of this video that we're going to try and keep this walking tour relatively cheap if not free, however there are certain things that we don't really want to scrimp on. We're only possibly going to be in Porto once in our lives and I think going and testing the port, especially with such a small local producer, is a really nice thing to do and experience we'll remember for quite a while. Yeah, I think it's important to support the local producers instead of the big daddies like Taylors and all the others that are actually a combined company making over oh, don't, don't 53 <laughs> million bottles a year. Can you believe it? So we've been looking at it for most of the morning. We're now going to head to the oldest district in Porto, Ribeira. This is where we're going to get the most Instagrammable shots ever if it wasn't so bloody cloudy. The Ribeira district is charming, colourful and a must-see whilst in Porto. The historic neighbourhood is an UNESCO site and has plenty of options for lunch, dinner or even a beverage on the riverbank. The quayside here was once a busy river trade point, but now it's bustling with tourists, vendors and street performers. So this is Clerigo's Tower. It's 75 metres high and is an iconic landmark in Porto skyline. So the tower was finished in 1763 and for five euros you can climb the 227 steps to the top. Bad timing. What perfect timing, and what are the chances of that happening just at that moment? We've climbed plenty of bell towers on our European road trip, but we had left this one a little bit too late, so it had closed. We returned to our camper van safely parked up at Venda Nova Station. This is where we spent a pretty quiet night urban camping. So that brings our Porto tour to a close. We had a really, really good time in Porto. Just one day and it was enough. We did over about 10 miles walking. Yeah. So we didn't film much of our return journey to the van because we were absolutely knackered. Yeah, we were in bed by 10 o'clock at night, which hasn't happened for a very long time. Yep. <laughs> the last city we visited on our trip was Lisbon, which was great. Uh, we met fantastic traveling there and had a good couple of days. Uh, but Porto, compared to that, is a lot easier to walk around. It feels a bit small, a bit more quaint. Um, yeah. As much as Lisbon was really good with fellow travelers and like new friends, they thought Porto was nice as well, was nicer. I, I did enjoy Porto, could have done another day there really, but um, it's possible in one day if you're just on a flying visit. It's also possible to see it on a budget too. I think our biggest expense was the Porto wine tour. Yeah. But you don't have to buy a bottle of port at the end. No. That but... was just us, but 
it was well worth it. Um, you know, you can't really go to Porto and not try the port. And uh, we had white port, that sh which we bought, which we didn't know really existed. So that'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, but as for now, we drove about three hours out of Porto and we are in the Douro wine region and it's absolutely lovely. Mm. So as always, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think to our budget-friendly Porto tour? Did we miss anything out? Should we have spent more money on something that I didn't know about? Uh, comment down below. Like if you have liked what you've seen and subscribe to see more from us on our travels. Press the bell to receive notification on our next uploads. Three, two, one. So we've hit the, <laughs> the trumpets were three, two, one. We've just left Quinta dos Corvos port wine. <laughs> <laughs> Speak like a human. So the port so the port from the, there. No. We're now off to see a piece of 14. With over 20 with over 20. I think our biggest expense was probably I think our biggest expense was probably the wine. I think our busy. <laughs> I think our busy. <laughs> when we meet with, when we. Uh, the last trip we visited on, the last trip, <laughs> the last city we visited on our trip was Lisbon.